Hey guys, I'm Dov, and today I'm back with something a little bit different. We're going to be having a recorded best of five domination between Ice Power and Storm Runner. So starting off here, we've got Corn versus Zinch. I'm going to look at their builds real quick before we load in, just so I can show you guys. Got two cultists to start for Ice Power here, a Blood Crushers, uh, one unit of dual hand weapon warriors, one halberd, and five shielded warriors. Uh, one Herald of Corn in reserve with nothing. We may not even see him get brought out, but we'll see. Uh, three more uh, dual hand weapon warriors, four flesh hounds, four furies, and a regular warhound. Or storm runners Zinch. She's got a herald of Zinch with lower metal up in the air. Two spawn of Zinch, three forsaken, two furies, and three horrors. Cultist of Zinch in reserve, along with some doomed knights, exalted flamer, spawn of Zinch, regular flamers, more forsaken, two screamers, and two pink horrors. We are going to be on the Arnheim map. Without further ado, let's get loaded in. Decided to do this as a little bit of a change of pace for you guys. Give me a chance to get some practice live casting. I'm planning on hosting some tournaments upcoming in the month of June, just to give us something to tide over. Essentially, I've been waiting for 1.2 to be released, just because I'm not uh, still quite happy with where the balance is at in terms of, uh, you know, sleds being too OP and some other things. But anyway, focusing on the task here. Uh, in terms of build setups, I do like the pick of the Wide Shield Warriors. Obviously, Corn doesn't have any cheap infantry right now. We don't have any Marauders of Corn, So, uh, Wide on the Shielded Warriors, the High Armor will also help them resist some of the shots of the Blues and so forth. The Armor Sundering, on the other hand, of the Spawns is very nice here. And in general, the combination of the Spawns and Forsaken is a very good synergistic uh, duo. Especially when you consider Lord Metal in here, you can synergize Plague of Rest as well for minus 90 armor pretty reliably for a good amount of uptime, right? So those uh, spawn of the Forsaken and even the sh shooting of the blues and so forth will just absolutely shred even the most heavily armored targets. Well, maybe not the most heavily armored targets. Something has like 160 armor. I mean, you're going to get it lower, certainly, but 70 armor is still a bit. So anyway... Meanwhile, on the other side, we've got the two cultists up on the high ground. It looks like Blood Crusher's also up here as well. Let's see how these players deploy. This is one phase of the battle we don't usually get to see is the deployment phase. It's like uh, Stormrunner's going sort of all in on the low ground to trying to tra capture both objectives, whereas uh, Ice Power sort of split his forces a little bit here with... A good portion, sort of a distraction force, if you will, a fixing force on the low ground, and a concentration of mobile value up on the high ground. We'll have to check. I believe those cultists are on horseback, but I might be wrong about that. Cultists of corn looking absolutely fantastic on this high elven map. And I really can't wait to bring the chaos factions to invade and burn down the elves because, you know, I'm biased against elves. And when it comes to the Warhammer factions, I will pick Chaos over Elves most of the time, to be honest. I don't know. Wood Elves are pretty cool in some aspects. Not gonna lie, Dark Elves, High Elves are pretty cool in some aspects too. But I am very much partial to the Chaos aesthetic, uh, given that it's somewhat unique to Warhammer. Uh, as a kid, you know, growing up, going to the game hobby stores, I never really played the Warhammer tabletop, but I always admired the box art. And the Tomb Kings and the Chaos always spoke to me, especially the Warriors of Chaos, these super heavily armored dudes, giant great helms, and anyway, Blood Crush is looking very cool as well. Creative Assembly did announce we're going to be getting the 1.2 update relatively shortly, sometime next week at the time I'm recording this, so uh, definitely looking forward to that. Once we get that, I should be hosting some tournaments and some other events on that, so be sure to stay tuned to the Discord channel and here on YouTube. Want to know more about that, but Stormrunner, doing a good job securing this low ground here. The problem with this sort of flanking development, it looks nice on paper, but you almost have to rush through, like, right now with the Hounds and the Blood Crushers and just leave the infantry up here to secure. To try and actually take advantage, you don't get sort of bottled up in these hot gates. Right now, though, uh, Stormrunner also not moving to sort of seal this path. Could, you know, just sort of put the, the spawn and one Forsaken here in kind of a blocking force. Right now, he's just pushing straight forward. Maybe try to take out these isolated forces, which is honestly not the worst. But uh, if he doesn't have any forces to secure at his flank here, he could just get crushed pretty hard by these Blood Crushers and the Flesh Hounds coming down the hill. But let's see. 
Keep it close. Hmm. Blues are going to open up on those shielded warriors. Forsaken charging in, and with the spawn not engaging here, that should go a little bit better for the Forsaken. Spawn do get caught up on the Cultists here, which is going to be okay for the Cultists. They'll take some damage, but they'll be able to dish some pretty serious damage to the spawn as well. But you can see over here, yeah, I mean, this is to be expected. It is like 1850 in terms of value against one 750 infantry. So absolutely, this is complete overkill, but it's a very good synergy. And uh, the both units, because of the barrier, both these Zinch units will end up taking very little damage in return. Beautiful little rear charge there. Stormrunner getting a nice little clean break, but in the meantime, it's costing him his other unit of spawn. The Blood Crushers did come down along with the Cultists and are fighting to secure. Subjective looks like we're going to have a bombardment. Searing Doom going to be used. The magic resistance should help the Blood Crushers somewhat, but still will deal pretty good damage. Nothing too crazy. Looks like uh, Ice Power was mostly able to dodge that without taking too much damage there. Uh, here, looks like the... Uh, the Shielded Warriors were able to just straight up win over the Forsaken of Zinch, which I guess not super surprising at the end of the day, but still, uh, I think that RNG probably means that fight could go either way. More likely, it's like probably 60% favored or 60-70% uh, favored maybe for the Warriors of Chaos, but hard to say. Uh, anyway, Blood Crusher's wheeling up and around here to try and move to crump this little pocket right here, uh, the Spawn of Zinch. And the Forsaken not getting flanked. They do get sort of all frontal engagements here. So maybe it would have been worth it to try to wheel those Blood Crushers up and around real quick. But regardless, this fight should still go pretty well for Corn Screamers moving in. They're going to do a pretty decent job kind of supporting against these Blood Crushers. And this is a pretty nasty final transmutation here. There, there is quite a bit of value. Uh, again, the spell resistance of the Blood Crushers definitely will help here. Uh, they wouldn't take as much damage as another Elite Cavalry might, but more uh, Flesh Hounds moving in here. Uh, with everything sort of moving in synergy with Zinch, uh, this big blob here, basically. Uh, they're winning slightly in terms of value, but just barely. Korn's also pushing pretty hard up to capture all of the objectives. Whereas Zinch, you know, they've got a lot of kind of fun support units, range units that are not going to be great at securing. These Doom Knights, obviously, a lot of army value that just simply cannot secure any objectives because they are flying. Granted, they're going to be great for some support, but Flamers just absolutely melting the Summon Bloodletter. They are just summoned, though, and there is one more in the tank here to be brought out. Flamers did maybe do enough damage to pay for themselves, even still, though, just to those two cultists. Or, uh, they were engaged there, but let's see. Harold's still holding out. He's going to drop another Searing Doom. Trying to catch the Halberds, but... Yeah, this pow Ice Power is able to catch that and halt... <coughs> excuse me, halt his Halberds. I don't know why. Getting all caught up there, but anyway. Screamer's just kind of hanging around here. That is one issue. If you invest heavily with an Air Force for Zinch, uh, you tend to go a little bit light on capture weight, but... I mean, of course, if you can win the battle decisively enough, you can just capture and, and get a full three cap in the late game and win. Uh, that being said, uh, Stormrunner not too far ahead. Only about, what, 700, 800, uh, 1800 rather points ahead, which is pretty significant, but it's not too, too crazy, certainly. Um, although, right now, Ice Power's got to be careful. He is going to be feeding a little bit of supply here. You can see the losing compensation being, being an extra five supply to Stormrunner, which is pretty significant. Uh, not to mention, of course, that he's winning on value. So those two things combined could mean that we see a late game snowball in favor of Stormrunner, but he does need to capture some objectives to start uh, evening this out a little bit so he doesn't get too far behind. Uh, let's see. We got these Tattered Forsaken moving down and in. The other thing too, though, I mean, the fact that uh, Zinch is ahead on army damage value, but weirdly enough, like, in terms of actual um, units on the battlefield, Horn looks a lot healthier. Uh, maybe a lot of that is because of these flamers here. They've used up quite a bit of their ammunition, but just in general, Corn has so much healthy infantry just kind of hanging around here. And again, we've got a lot of value tied up in these Doom Knights and in Herald and such, and these flying units that won't have any ability to capture. So right now... Ice Power in a pretty commanding position, even though he is losing slightly on army damage value on objectives and battlefield control. He is very well ahead. ahead. He's got heavy warriors on all of these points that are going to be relatively tough to dislodge. Um, 
more flamer shots coming in though they're gonna try and do their best to just mulch and burn these chaos warriors flamers and spawn working in tandem we've got more pinks coming in as well uh, summon furies getting defeated there or those are actual corn furies right I'm gonna say i don't think that uh corn can actually summon furies at all interestingly enough even though i think um all the other chaos factions can uh, maybe nurgle can't maybe only slanesh and anyway <laughs> but i shouldn't see each I'm trying to think. I don't think anybody on in, in multiplayer for Nurgle actually has the Portal Glyph. But anyway, Doom Knights moving in here to fight some of their corn brethren in melee. Corn cousins, rather, not brethren. But uh, yeah, hopefully we'll get unique Zinch models soon. The discs themselves look so cool. The warriors fighting them were a little bit of a letdown, but ooh, nice lags there as we get to Searing Doom. Bombarding those dual weapon warriors. Nice rear charge, though, from those Flesh Hounds. That's going to be super cost-effective into the Doom Knights, just trapping them in. Uh, we do have some nice concave of Blue Horror Fire, though, saturating in and counterattacking on those Flesh Hounds. Right now, though, yeah, I don't think uh, Stormrunner, despite the fact he's been able to stay consistently about 2,000 points-ish ahead on army damage value, it still is not going to be enough. Only 10 units on the battlefield versus Korn's 12 and he doesn't have any battlefield control. None of these objectives secured. So great job by Stormrunner here. But it does look like he's going to throw in the towel. And that will be a victory for Horn and for Ice Power. So fun stuff. Ice Power has been away at school. He's just recently returning, getting back into the thing. So a nice performance there. In terms of damage, I think just honestly, not a lot of stuff probably is super cost effective. The Flesh Hounds definitely are going to be a, probably a bright spot. Yeah, they generally do pretty well. But uh, interestingly enough, it was just a lot of good control and kind of micro in terms of getting guys onto the objective. And again, from Zinch's perspective, like these flying units are powerful and they are going to do quite a bit of work for you. But that being said, investing heavily into them uh, means that you're not going to have a lot of capture weight. And in a situation like this where corn might just go ultra wide on infantry, um, yeah, maybe it would have been better to just also go with more land units. can't really predict that. But personally, I probably wouldn't take the Furies at all here uh, for Zinch. I really don't think in this particular matchup, Furies offer you anything. Slanesh Furies arguably can be okay in, against but generally most factions i think you don't really want to be taking furies too much here um i think the screamers you know one or two units of them is definitely enough to protect well not enough to protect him up in the air if they go with the blood they're still going to be running for your life but anyway let's move on to the next battle so i will come back once these guys have their picks and armies locked in see you then all right, we're back. Slanesh versus Cathay. Ice power coming in with Slanesh. He's got a Herald of Slanesh, it looks like, on the steed. A couple of Seekers, a couple of Seeker Chariots, three Hell Striders, one Hell Scourge Marauder Infantry, and regular Marauder Infantry, two more Seekers in Reserve, Seeker Chariots, Demonets, Hell Striders, four Furies, and four more Hell Scourges, plus one Anti Infantry Marauder in Reserve. Uh, for Cathay and their starting army, Dragon Blood Lord up in the air, Sky Junk and an Astromancer, three Jade Warriors, two Jade Crossbows, four Jade Spears, Sentinel in reserve with two Longmas, two Jade Crossbows, and three Jade Warriors. We're going to be on the battle uh, for It's a Map. Let's get loaded in there and get started. It's certainly going to be an interesting matchup. Slanesh's. Lack of flying tools does mean that the junk is a great pick here. Generally, flying shooting is going to be very good against them, given their current roster construction. But that being said, this open field map does favor Slanesh Cavalry Rush. You know, kind of attack builds very uh, consistently from what I've seen on replays on this map. In fact, I think, think one of my favorite battles I've seen in total is so far in Warhammer 3 was ice power maybe it was ice power was ice power playing someone else in a slanesh mirror we had that gigantic cavalry battle on stream one time anyway fun stuff um let's kind of look at the deployments here taking the glory of the battle for it's a map certainly does look gorgeous makes me so so hyped for the warhammer 2 warhammer 1 and 2 races we added in Yes, 
indeed. The deployment zones are fairly small, so I would expect that these guys are going to be moving on pretty quickly from their deployment, but... Yes, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Anyway, let's see. Slamesh does have the capacity for quite a bit of Vanguard, so Ice Power placing his pretty much entire cap force, at least for the time being up on this high ground. He may yet adjust them, but Chariot's then supporting infantry in the center with the Herald for uh, Tathay here. This Sky Junk could come park slightly up here. I would probably park it like right on this corner. And maybe, so you have, uh, right now, I mean, where it's at, it's kind of in a little bit of a divot. I don't know if it can actually fire up onto the slope right here. I think you would maybe even need to come, like, right about here. Because, you know, it does float at a fixed elevation. You can see it does require direct line of sight to be able to shoot the rockets. Although, I don't know, maybe there's enough of an arc they could actually hit up onto that slope. But it is pretty close. I don't know, maybe not. Maybe they wouldn't have any obstruction issues, but let's see. Let's see what they can do here. Dragon-Blooded Lord. What spells are we lock rocking? We've got Dragon's Breath, Jade Shield, so both very cheap. Jade Shield, honestly, I don't... <laughs> this spell's so cheap for what it does. Only lasts 11 seconds, granted, but 44% damage resistance is pretty crazy. Also going to be getting a little bit of Mastery of the Winds. Uh, overcharging will go up to, what, 110% Astromancer here. Who does in fact have wind blast and harmonic convergence i like that quite a bit the wind blast in particular um it's not nearly as good as the dragon's breath in fact if you just compare their damage one to one here 18 damage per second there on eight winds of magic and for the dragon blooded lord 32 for six winds of magic so it's it's less winds of magic right or more damage yeah, much more damage. So, it's interesting. The spell definitely needs to be adjusted to help balance it out, but let's see. Right now, Ice Power maneuvering his cavalry up onto the high ground here and take a pretty commanding position. Oof, oof, yeah, that Dragon's Breath spell is so, so nasty, especially against a light armor faction like Slanesh. So, infantry is going to have a hard time performing here because of that, and uh, he's got to be careful. Ice Power letting his... Harold here, get a little bit far forward. Probably going to take some crossbow fire, but uh, she doesn't have any capacity to heal herself. She's also pretty low HP, so all this crossbow fire that she does take is going to be bad, but Chariot's now attacking here. Getting into those peasants. Let's uh, check the damage. Uh, so far, nothing too crazy. The uh, Chariot's Disruption, though, is certainly worth it. You can see how they've kind of uh, discombobulated this whole line. And now here's the good stuff. Getting a side charge through this infantry where they can actually impact, like, every single model in a unit. That is one of the best ways of using Chariots, uh, honestly, uh, is to just plow directly into the side of infantry. Even though rear charges are great, too. Honestly, side charges offer that sort of mow down the entire line effect. You can see how damage was pretty extreme in comparison to other... Uh, charges there, but Stormrunner are kind of forming a little bit of a mobile box here. The Halberds, I think, were mostly able to catch that charge without taking an extreme amount of damage. They still do get punched through, though, which is definitely an issue. Longmas continuously screaming as they attempt to charge after the chariots do intercept those Furies, do a ton of damage to them. So right now, yeah, right now, uh, Stormrunner is definitely getting the better end of the damage value in terms of the engagements because of the magic, but certainly tactically, uh, Guy's Power has done a great job of blowing up this formation here and allowing his units mostly to get into combat without getting completely shredded. But now, got some Seekers charging in here. Should be doing some great damage. Those uh, Jade Halberds, I think, were able to face the, in the right direction, though, to catch them. And yeah, it looks like the Seekers had a little bit of a tough time there, getting immediately countercharged by Longmas as well. Uh, a little bit of a Lash of Slanesh. Not going to be nearly as magic efficient as that nasty Dragon Breath right there. Uh, but so far, so far, man, um, looking like pretty even, honestly. Even though Cathay is ahead on army damage value, I would say Slanesh's battlefield control because of their speed does mean that, that Cathay is going to have to get like a value advantage to be actually able to push forward and capture the points, although they are pretty much within range to capture this center objective. 
they don't have quite enough models to do so at the moment, but uh, I guess if these infantry were able to rally get on the objective, they could. Ice Power, once again, despite the fact he's far behind on army damage value, still battlefield control and capture rise, just doing a great job focusing on winning, right? That is obviously in domination. Yes, you need to win the battle, but you do need to capture ground as well. That's what it's all about, right? Capturing and holding ground. So let's see what Cathay can do. Hmm. Yeah, he also has managed to claw his way back a little bit on army damage value too, despite that really rough initial opening there. So that uh, little bit of acquiescence, buffing the melee defense of some of those units. Oof, nasty dragon's breath too. Rockets still raining down. Rockets have mostly been offline for a, uh, quite a good amount of time, probably a lot longer than they should have been. But anyway, crossbows firing in too, trying to do whatever they can to finish off the herald there. But uh, Slamesh, the fact that they can just play you so far forward, like they summon in all these fast units and just push them through. And Stormrunner's got quite a bit of supply in the tank here. I don't know exactly if he's trying to bank or what, what exactly he's trying to draw in here. But uh, I don't know if he really has Jade Lancers would be quite useful in this situation to help counteract the chariots a little bit. Just to provide you some extra mass and punch. Um... Yeah, right now, these halberds are holding. They're just getting outnumbered so significantly that they're not able to really capture. And who knows how long they'll be able to hold when they're getting fully surrounded by Hellstriders and whatever else. Pretty rough stuff right now. Let's see what they can do. Celeste Chariots are just about out of steam, and the big boy's been brought out. Terracotta Sentinel on the field, ready to rumble, ready to push up and capture some objectives. But Storm Runner definitely does have to capture as soon as possible. Uh, let's see. Dragon Blood of the Lord, another beautiful breath attack there, finishing off a few tattered units. And finally, I think he's going to be able to route enough of this Marauder Infantry to come in and capture. There's just so much cheap Marauder Infantry flooding the board here. Very surprised then. Uh, and Ice Power's been doing a great job keeping his units all forward and concentrated so that Cathay just can't amass enough capture weight in a I almost wonder, again, all the value spent on the Longmas does mean that they are not able to capture. I, I think, to be honest, the, the value spent on Longmas probably would have been better spent on just regular Jade Lancers. They would have fulfilled a somewhat similar role. Maybe you want one Longma just to protect the junk against Furies, um, but the other one could probably be swapped out for the Jade Lancers just to give you a little bit more weight and numbers on the ground, because, like... Right now, he's winning slowly but surely. He's uh, uh, Stormrunner's taken a pretty decisive lead, actually, on damage value, but he's not really able to capitalize that on that moment because the infantry of Cathay just too slow to really get to the objectives. But there's still plenty of game time left. If you can get in there and cap three cap these objectives and just hold them, uh, you know, basically finish off the army of Slanesh, which he's not too far off from doing. But Stormrunner, you like really. I know he's not watching this live, obviously, but uh, just get all these groups and just force path onto that objective, like, right now, so that you can at least get this one secured. That would give you a tiny bit of breathing space to try and get some units together on these other summons to go for these other objectives, but, yeah, I'm not sure if he's going to be able to get to it in time. We'll see. Gate Warrior is coming through there. The Astromancer does count for some capture weight, and finally... Stormrunner getting on the board with some capture weight on this center objective. I can't help but think it might be too late, though, as there's just not going to be enough. It looks like he is retreating some of those very tattered units to try and heal them, get them back in the fight. Um, yeah. A little bit tricky in that way uh, for mortal factions versus demons because obviously the demons disintegrate, but a little bit of lags here. Hope that stabilizes. Ice Power's still got 16 units on the field. And all these units bottled up in the deployment here. Oof. Nasty. Another nasty Dragon Breath attack. Along with the Rider... Uh, sorry, the, the Shooting Gun Lord sort of jankly landing here. Got more Chariots resummoned back. That's going to be rough. There's not a lot to deal with them at this point, but... At the very least, Stormrunner did get an objective capped. If he's got uh, any units 
Uh, yeah, this see, this is the issue. Again, I think some cheap ground-based cavalry would have been excellently helpful in a situation like this where you need to quickly push forward just sort of any any amount of numbers onto these objectives and try and capture it. Um, but, you know, it's just a casual game. It's not for tournament prizes or anything, but there you go. Chariots do get pretty quickly bogged down, and even just a momentary slip-up of Micro with those chariots does lead to them getting completely massacred, but at the same time, they're, uh, you know, staying in position to just keep Cathay on the defensive here, so they're not able to push units up to these other uh, objectives, and I don't think, I think Stormrunner, it's too late for him already because of his build composition not having enough mobility. Uh, I don't think he has uh, enough time, even now, if he were to summon at the uh, correct summon points, like especially this top objective, there's just no way to get there in time without bringing some peasant horsemen or something. Uh, which he doesn't have, obviously, so... Yeah, from a build perspective, I like almost all of what uh, Stormrunner brought here. But credit to Ice Power, just playing far forward, you know, keeping it in Stormrunner's face the whole time, playing the objectives. Looking like he's going to go up 2-0 on the series. And Stormrunner bring it back. Ice Power is going to be... Uh, he will have used quite a bit of his really good factions by now. Another thing, too, unfortunately, we can't see anywhere for either player the uh, reinforcement panel. So I can't see, like, if uh, Cathay is actually unit blocked here where they don't have enough units to summon back because so many of their tattered, tattered shattered units are routing off the battlefield. But anyway, Longma's there. Got uh, these shattered Hellscourge Marauders here. So again, these shattered units, they can't be... Obviously, um, yeah, can't be healed and resummoned while they've been shattered. So, anyway, GG's to both. It's like, uh, yeah, Ice Power's going to get that one there. So, let's look at the value. 236 kills, just insane value on the Dragon-Blooded Lord there. Sky Junk also pays for itself. Love that pick here. The Astromancer's an interesting one. I might have just gone a little bit cheaper. I don't know. Windblast is okay, but I think because that Dragon's Breath spell is so strong, you just want to dedicate all of your Winds of Magic to that, in my opinion. But uh, anyway, the rest of the build here, Jade Crossbows do okay. Uh, the Spears also do a decent enough job, nothing too crazy. Seekers for Sladesh do an excellent job. Broaders just providing that heavy capture weight and taking hits on the chin. Chariots did pay for themselves probably on the first time around. I don't know... Second time around, I don't think they did that much. Um, so that's pretty nice to see there. Those chariots do require a good bit of micro, but they can be reasonably cost-effective if used well. Slanesh Fury is also contributing nicely, so pretty decent stuff. Um, yeah, for Cathay's reserve here, Longmas do okay, but again, spending this much on Longmas and, and big monstrous single entities just leaves you so light on capture power. I definitely would cut two of these Longmas and go with like some light cavalry and some heavy cavalry on the ground, some Jane Lancers and some Peasant Horsemen, effectively to uh, help provide that extra mobile capture weight and just some extra bodies and mass to counteract the Slanesh cavalry. But anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed that battle. We still got potentially one, potentially more, so I'll be right back once we get to it. Back now with Nurgle versus Cafe. We'll go over Stormrunner's build first. He's got an Exalted Grid and Clean One. A little bit risky against Cafe's Missile Play, but let's see what he can do with it. Couple of spawns, three Plague Bearers, Furies, and three Nurglings. Couple of Plague Drones up in the air, two Exalted Plague Bearers, and two Rot Flies, two Forsaken Furies, and some more Nurglings. For Cafe, here we've got an Alchemist leading the way, two Bushing Compasses. Four Jade Crossbows, five Jade Warriors, and four Peasant Archers. Wow, that's a lot of a lot of stuff. A Magistrate, uh, very cheap as the quote-unquote Lord in Reserve. Uh, two Longmas, three Jade Lancers, four Peasant Horsemen, and four Peasant Long Spears. We're going to be on the Death Pass map. Let's get started. It'll be quite a bit of fun. I'm curious to see. I, I, I'm i not sure. I like the Herald here personally because he's cheap. He's small. Small target to be getting shot at. And he can still trade well enough against stuff like Sentinels. Um, that he's a pretty good choice to bring even on foot. Or on the Palanquin, honestly. 
but uh, I'm not sure about the Exalted Great and Clean one here. We'll see. It is quite a big target to be getting blasted and shot and filled with arrows in this case and crossbow bolts. So let's see. I'm genuinely worried about that, but it depends on how Stormrunner chooses to push the objectives. If Ice Power just goes all in on the center with all of his range units, he could try and push out to like maybe the side objective. That is a lot of value to be holding off to the side, though. He probably wants to have that value fighting in the main blob, but um, yeah, we'll see. Plague Bears here. And absolutely disgusting. Yes. Fantastic. Love me some hot Nurgle action. Yeah, I like the I like the spawns and the plague bearers in tandem here. I maybe would have taken a couple of Forsaken. I don't know. Forsaken and Reserve are pretty decent also. Uh, the fact that they have the extra speed to kind of close the distance, but certainly the better speed on the Plague Bears does make them better, obviously. Uh, I don't know, maybe Exalted's in the in the starting army. Likewise, I might have also taken some Death's Heads. Specific, um, what are they, the Plague Drones? So that if I do manage to screen from Longmas, I can come in with those and maybe deal some very significant range damage to a high-value target, which... Yeah, they actually didn't bring any of, um, you know, so hindsight being 2020 wouldn't have been super useful in this specific case, but yeah, Cathay just going super wide. Love this color scheme too, by the way, this black and red alchemist pretending she's the Lord. Looking good. Looks like they've started up the battle as well. Both going to be sizing each other up. The harmony is affecting most of these units. Looks like maybe a handful of the crossbows are out of harmony, but the increase to the harmony radius definitely very significant. You can see how these guys are just kind of right at the edge of it, this uh, peasant archer here, which, yeah, I mean, considering how far they are away, actually, that is pretty solid. More peasant horsemen immediately brings being summoned in. Of course, you start with some supply in the current domination of format start with what like 500 supplies so immediately they can start bringing some units in we've got furies coming in for nurgle i'm gonna get some more flying disruption tools but it looks like Stormrunner is probably just gonna be trying to go all in in the center i'm not sure about this it's just there's so much range fire to shred the exalted grid and clean one even as with his 12,000 hp the uh, you know no missile resistance relatively limited armor the physical resistance does help i guess but still in general it's not something you want to be doing too much i think let's see right now Cathay does not have access to lore of fire i don't know hopefully they get access to it in the future but flaming sword of ruin definitely would help giving the magic and fire damage both with the kindle flame spike and i think it's just straight up increases missile damage as well but anyway Nurgle going straight up the pipe here. Nurgling is going to be soaking some of that initial damage. And then the Plague Bear is getting in there. Nice stream of corruption. Passing right through. Getting a good chunk out of those Jade Warriors there. Not the craziest cast I've ever seen, but definitely pretty solid. Spawn also try and punch through those Jade Warriors. Here comes the big boy right now. Ice Power is not really focusing all of his ranged units on the Exalted Great and Clean one, which is definitely a mistake. You would want to get literally every single ranged infantry onto a hot group. And just, you know, single click all of them onto Big Chungus here. But right now, it's just not happening. So he's able to get into combat. Swing his bell around. Get that drain going. Get his chain going. Get the whole gang of Nurglings going. Oh, yeah. Also got a stack of Nurglings right here. Getting smacked by the Wujing Compass. Angry Oxen. Like, hey, be gone. There we go. Another stream of corruption there. Down the line of crossbows and archers. Absolutely savages. One unit of peasant archers there leading to them routing. Meanwhile, here in the center, those nurglings are disintegrating. And spawn are, of course, unbreakable. So they're just going to be punching through, occupying. Even just with the two of them, poisoning and occupying these 
four crossbowmen so they can't continue to fight but look at that range focus yeah this is what i'm talking about had ice power just focused immediately as soon as that thing came into range he might have been able to have it down already even as it is he's able to do significant enough range damage to push it back a little final transmutation there as well from the alchemist so pretty good stuff He's now trying to maneuver and sort of trundle around and avoid that range fire as much as possible. Honestly, I'd probably just pull him well back and completely out of range of all of that. Um, right now, Ice Power is not playing the objective so much on this one. I mean, both players kind of just playing into the battle at this point. But, oh, that's not good. Thought the Great Unclean one actually gets forced into banishment. He is taking substantial damage from that. Looks like he's going to be going down. Doubt he's going to be able to recover his leadership. No, not the big Chungus. Well, that is quite a significant presence down, but the question is, will it end up mattering? I mean, uh, definitely uh, Cathay is going to be very hard, far ahead on army damage value, but, I mean, Nurgle generally isn't too bothered about being too far behind on army damage value. This might be a little bit insurmountable, though. It is about, you know, 5,000 value, <laughs> give or take, but... Uh, Nurgle still, at least for the time being, playing forward. That being said, Ice Power was able to send some spears over to cap the side objective here. And Stormrunner didn't send anything to capture his own home objective, which is definitely a mistake. Like, one Forsaken could have been sent out there to help deal with that objective. Even still, he could just, uh, you know, summon like a single Forsaken off of this, or even a Nurgling, and go fight those peasant long spears. But more Nurglings and, uh, oof. Yeah, it looks like Stormrunner actually just throws in the towel there. So, unfortunately, that is going to be the end of the best of five with a clean 3-0 sweep for Ice Power. Looks like Ice Power definitely still got it, but definitely a fun one. A little bit of an experimental build there. This is exactly why I like the Herald in this matchup is for that specific reason. Um, but, uh, anyway, yeah, not really too much else to talk about there. Pretty much went uh, more or less as i expected once ice power actually started to focus his range units so there you go hopefully you guys enjoyed that uh, best of five turning into a three game series definitely enjoyable for me i'm gonna be trying to mix it up in terms of the type of content that i bring i'm still gonna be focused primarily on warhammer 3 but i want to experiment with some different formats um you know i'm a uh, this channel, unfortunately, uh, and fortunately, you know, it's great that I have such a ded dedicated fan base, but because I haven't branched out much with other games, even now to do so would require quite a bit of time and investment, and I may still end up doing it, but I am going to be sticking primarily with Warhammer 3 for the time being. It's just won't be uploading every day, most likely. But anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. If you do like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification button. Every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks again for watching. See you next time.